tax objectify problems. Problem one, the function graphed is f of x equals x squared plus k. What is true about the value of k? Here we have the graph of a function and we are asked to determine which of these four answer choices is true. We have an unknown in this function k and all of our answer choices are possible values of this unknown k. We know that we can graph any function by simply plotting points and if we plot a few points and visually evaluate the, vis the given graph we can gather information about our unknown k. We take a look at this point here and where x equals 0 we see that y equals 1 and the point on the graph is marked here at 0 comma 1. We bring down the equation y equals x squared plus k to evaluate and we use this point replacing the y with 1 and the x with 0 and here they are inserted into the equation and since 0 squared is 0 this simplifies to k equals 1. And that gives us our answer, k equals 1. So our answer is c. In the graphing calculator, we can try out our different answers. For answer c, we enter y equals x squared plus 1. And we graph by pressing the graph key. And that graph of y equals x squared plus 1 confirms that c is our correct answer. Problem 2. The function g of x is obtained by translating f of x equals x squared plus 4 two units down. Which equation describes g of x? If we have a correct understanding of functions, we will know that this number all by itself, 4, is the y-intercept of the function. Then we look at all the answers, a through d, and here are all the y-intercepts in each one of the answers. Note that on answer b, I put in a plus 0 in blue to signify a y-intercept of 0. If we look for the number that's 2 less than 4, that would be 2, meaning that c and d would be our only possible correct answers. At the same time, that eliminates answers a and b, which we cross off. Now we need to look for the x squared and f of x, and that would be answer c. And we circle our correct answer, c. Another way to do this problem is with the help of graphing calculator. First, enter the original equation, y equals x squared plus 4. Next, graph the equation to see what it looks like. Then we look at the equations in the answers to see which one, uh, what each one looks like. Let's look at answer D. We put the equation in Y2 just below the original equation. Now we press graph. This is not a translation but a reflection so we cross off answer D. We go back to Y equals and replace answer D with the answer in C. Press graph. We can see that answer C is translated down two units from the original parabola confirming that our correct answer is C. Problem 3. Which answer places the four quadratic functions in such an order that the graph parabolas are in order from the widest to the narrowest. And then we have four answer choices, each with four quadratic functions separated by commas. If we have a correct understanding of what a quadratic coefficient does in a quadratic function, this one will be quite easy. The quadratic coefficients are the leading coefficients of the x squared terms. For instance, this number, negative 8, in front of x squared is a quadratic coefficient and it's sometimes called a. This number, in this case negative 8, does two things. First, whether it's negative or positive, decides which way the parabola opens, either up or down. A positive number opens the parabola upward, and a negative number opens it downward. And secondly, this number determines the narrowness, or width, of the parabola. The larger the number's absolute value, the narrower the graph of the parabola. And that means that in this answer A, the numbers start large and get smaller, going from negative 8 to 2 to negative 7 eighths to 1 fourth tells us that the parabolas will become wider going from left to right. And since we need them to become narrower going from left to right, we cross off answer A. But if we go down to answer C, we see the quadratic coefficients progressing from 1 fourth to negative 7 eighths to 2 to negative 8. And since that's getting narrower from left to right, that means that C is our correct answer. Another thing we can do is place the functions in our graphing calculator in order. And here are the functions from answer C placed in order from y1 to y4 in our function editor. And when we press graph, the functions will appear in sequence from y1 through y4. Here's the function in y1 that appears first. And here it is with the second equation from y2. Notice that they are getting more narrow, at least from the first one to the second one. And here's the graph with the third function included, and that's from y3, even narrower. And finally, here they are all together, the last one narrowest of all. These happen pretty fast. They confirm again that C is the correct answer. 
Problem 4. The function f of x equals x squared plus 6 is transformed by reflection about the x-axis. Which function f prime of x represents its reflection? And we have as answer choices these different functions having an x squared term and also a y-intercept of plus or minus 6. If we really understand what a reflection of a function is about the x-axis, this problem is quite easy. For a reflection about the x-axis, all signs of the function need to be reversed. In order to reflect this function, it needs to be multiplied by negative 1. And that would be f prime of x is equal to negative x squared minus 6. And that would make c our correct answer. Alternatively, or just to check our answer, we could go to our graphing calculator and enter y equals x squared plus 6. Then graph the function. Then go back to y equals and enter the answer for c and y2. Then graph both functions at once. And we see that they are reflections or mirror images of each other across the x-axis here shown in red, which again supports c as our correct answer. Problem 5. What is a simplified form of a to the fourth b squared c over a cubed b to the fifth c squared? These types of problems with all the letters and exponents may seem intimidating, but if we take a closer look at the answer choices, we'll see that the problem can be made a whole lot easier. Instead of looking at the whole problem, let's just look at it one letter at a time in the answers. Here are the a's with its exponents. But these answers for a, b, and d have the same power of a, meaning that we may not be able to solve the simplification just by looking at this variable alone. Now let's look at the b's along with their exponents. This one's better because we only have two answers that are the same, this b cubed in the denominator for answers b and d. So we might use b to help solve it. Now let's check out the c's with its exponents. For this one, c, all the exponents are different. Answers b and c both have c cubed, but they are different since in answer b, the c cubed is in the denominator, and in answer c, c cubed is in the numerator. And that means that if we just figure out what this, c over c squared, simplifies to, then we can easily pick out our correct answer. And c over c squared simplifies to 1 over c. And this is where we see 1 over c in answer D. And this makes answer D our correct answer. That wasn't too bad, was it? We just had to evaluate one letter, c, and not all three to solve it. Also, if you forget everything about the rules of exponents, you can still get this one right. Or even just check your work. You can use your calculator to check for expression equivalency. What we need to do is store values for a, b, and c. And here are 0.7 stored for a, point b stored for, 0.8 stored for b, and 0.9 stored for c. You can use just about any numbers you would like, but use different numbers for each variable. And don't use 0, 1, or 2. To store, press the number, then the STO key above the ON key, and then the letter by pressing alpha, then the letter you want, then press enter. Next, enter the expression we want to evaluate, in this case, a to the fourth b squared c over a cubed b to the fifth c squared. Place both the entire numerator and the entire denominator inside parentheses. Use the rooftop key on the right side or the keypad below the clear key for the exponents. Then press enter. This is the number we'll be looking for in our right answer when we try them out. 1.519, etc. Let's try an answer. Here's answer A entered. And when we press enter, this is what we get, about 0.29. And that means that since it's not 1.519, A is not the right answer, so we cross off A. Next, we'll enter answer D, A over B cubed C. Press Enter. This gives us 1.519, just like our original expression, confirming that D is our correct answer. Problem 6. What is the simplified form of quantity negative 6A cubed B to the fifth times quantity 2A squared B cubed over negative 18 a to the fourth b to the eighth c cubed. This is a problem quite similar to the last one, and usually there's at least one problem somewhat like this on all versions of the math tax. First, let's look at the numbers. We have negative 6 times 2 divided by negative 18 in the denominator. And all that simplifies to negative 12 over negative 18. And that further simplifies to 2 over 3, or 2 thirds. And that eliminates answers A and D, since A and D have negative two-thirds. And between answers B and C, the powers of A are different. 
So if you figure out the a portion, we will have solved the problem. In the numerator, we have a cubed times a squared, which multiplied together are a to the fifth, divided by a to the fourth. And a to the fifth over a to the fourth equals a. And in our remaining answers, this is where we see a, and that's answer b, our correct answer. We can go to our calculator again. I've stored 0.7 for a, 0.8 for b, and 0.9 for c. Then we enter the original expression, being sure to place both the numerator and the denominator in parentheses. Press enter. We get approximately 0.64. Now here's answer A entered. Press enter. We get about negative 0.36, which we had already crossed off as incorrect using another method. Then we enter answer B. Then press enter. And we get the same thing we got earlier, about 0.64, verifying the answer that we got earlier. Problem 7. What are the roots of the quadratic equation x squared minus 3x plus 2 equals 0? What does this mean? What it means is, which pair of numbers makes this equation a true statement? So if a is the correct answer, negative 2 replacing x would satisfy this equation. And for a to be the correct answer, negative 1 replacing x would also have to satisfy this equation and make it a true statement. In this problem, the test writer is checking to be sure that you understand that both answers have to be solutions to the equation. As a teacher of Algebra 2, I show my students four ways of solving a quadratic equation like this one, and that's not including substituting answers for multiple choice options. These methods are factoring, graphing the quadratic formula, and completing the square. We'll first use factoring. The factoring method involves separating a polynomial into factors, and then using those factors to find solutions or roots to the equation. This trinomial, x squared minus 3x plus 2, can be separated into two factors, and that's called factoring. In factored form, this trinomial is quantity x minus 2 times quantity x minus 1. It factors out to this because if we multiply these factors together, they equal x squared minus 3x plus 2. To solve by factoring, for the left side to equal 0, either quantity x minus 2 can equal 0 or quantity x minus 1 can equal 0. So here's the equation x minus 2 equals 0. And here's the equation x minus 1 equals 0. To solve the left equation, x equals 2. And for the equation on the right, x equals 1. And here's where these answers are found, answer D. So we circle D as our correct answer. We can also use the calculator to check our answer. We store 2 for x by pressing 2, then STO for storage, then x, then enter. Then we enter the left side of the equation, x squared minus 3x plus 2, press enter. And we get 0, proving that 2 is a root or solution to this equation. And we go through the same process to test the other solution for d, which is 1, and this is what it looks like. And with an input of 1, this one also equals 0, verifying d is our correct answer. Again, both answers need to be verified as correct. We could also solve by graphing. Place x squared minus 3x plus 2 in y1, and then press graph. We look for the roots or solutions along the x-axis. They're kind of hard to see along the x-axis here. So we can go to the table view by pressing second, then graph. And we see our roots or solutions here at x equals 1 and at x equals 2. On your tax, you'll very likely be asked to solve a quadratic equation. They may be in different forms and complexities, including different letters for variables besides x. Problem 8. If the area of the rectangle is 20x cubed y, what is the length? To do this problem, we need to take into account the formula for the area of a rectangle, and that's area equals length times width, written as A equals LW. We will use what we know to find out what we don't know. We plug in 20x cubed y for the area, and we plug in 5x squared y for the width, or W. Then we rewrite the equation with area and width substituted for, and that is 20x cubed y equals 5x squared y times L. Now we need to solve for L. Dividing both sides of the equation by 5x squared y, we have L equals 20x cubed y divided by 5x squared y. And since 20 over 5 is 4, x cubed divided by x squared is x, and y over y cancel each other at equal 1, we have L equals 4x. And that means that our answer to this problem is A. We can check our answer in the calculators we have done in earlier problems by substituting for x and y. And here I've substituted 0.7 for x and 0.8 for y. Then we can enter the expression for area divided by width and closing both the numerator and the denominator in parentheses. Then press enter. 
we get a length value of 2.8 when x equals 0.7 and y equals 0.8. Then we enter answer A, which is 4x. Then press enter. And we also get 2.8, and that confirms that A is the correct answer. This has been Tax Objective 5 Problems. Thanks for viewing.